TypeScript has a feature called generics, which lets you parameterize types. Now that might sound a little bit odd. What does parameterizing types mean? Well, parameterizing values makes sense. In a function, for example, you have a function where you have a bunch of arguments or parameters, and those are parameters for values. You pass in values using those parameters. Now, how do you parameterize types? Let me give you an example. So I'm gonna create a, a new file called generics.ts and uh, let's say I have a function which echoes values. Now let's say I have a function echo which basically takes in an argument call it arg and then it returns that same argument. It's a little bit of a contrived example but I think it's a good illustration for our, uh, generics. Now I can call this echo function with uh, a number and what it returns should be a number. If I call the echo function with a string, what I get back should be a string. Now here's a question. How do I type this function? What are the types that I add? What's the return type and what's the uh, input argument type? We are doing TypeScript after all. We should be typing it. One thing I could do is type this as any because there is no restriction really on what type the input argument could be. And uh, again, the return type could be any. But here's the problem. I'm losing that information that whatever is being passed here is the same thing that it returns from the echo function. Now, if I were to call echo of a number, I know by looking at the code that the return type is also a number. But TypeScript doesn't know this. You're basically saying anything goes. Now I can say a var my string, which is a string, is the result of echo of one. So it takes in a number and then it's, I'm assigning it to a string. Now why does this work? This works because TypeScript allows it. You're seeing any, any. So TypeScript doesn't stop you from doing this. What you wanna do is somehow tell TypeScript that these two types are always the same. Whatever is the type that's being passed in is a type that the function is gonna return. And you wanna prevent people from making mistakes like this. Now, how do you do this? The way to do this is to use the TypeScript generics feature. Generics feature lets you create placeholders for types that you can use in multiple places in your um, function definition in this case. So the way to create a placeholder is by using this syntax, which is less than letter greater than. All right, so I'm doing this next to the function name to indicate that this is a generic function. And uh, the placeholder that I'm using for the type involved is T. Now when I do this, I can use this in place of any type declaration. So rather than putting any over here, I'm just gonna put this T. And uh, as this any, I'm gonna put this T. So what I'm doing here is I'm, a couple of things I'm telling TypeScript. First, I'm telling it that this is a generic function and I will be using types with this letter called T. You don't actually have to use T, but T is a common convention. And now TypeScript knows that T is a placeholder for type information. So rather than explicitly mentioning types over here in the declaration, I'm gonna be using this placeholder. And then, secondly, I'm using that placeholder in a couple of places. First, to declare the input argument and to declare the return type. TypeScript doesn't really do anything with this thing as far as checking is concerned. When you create an input argument and assign it to a placeholder, to a generic, TypeScript doesn't do any type checking. But what it does is it makes a note of whatever you have passed in over here. And then when the function completes execution, since it's also marked as a return type of type T, it makes sure that whatever this function is returning is same as the type that was passed in because it made a note of it earlier, right? So it's comparing the two and making sure that it's the same. And now when it tries to compile this line, it notices the error right away. So you see here, one is not assignable to type string because it's checking what this value is. So when it looks at this one, it says, okay, T is a number. And then it looks at this function, it's returning a number. It should return a number. And uh, now it looks at what it's being assigned to, which is a string and well, string and number doesn't, uh, they don't go well together. So it complains and throws an error over here. So the way to get this to work is to change this to a number 
or you can just get rid of this declaration and the implicit uh, type definition assumes that this is a number because of this generic declaration, all right? So this is a very simple example of uh, generics. There are a lot more things you can do with this, uh, especially with classes. Now, let's say I have a person class. I'm gonna copy this over from uh, our other example. I have a person class here, and uh, I guess it's making this a duplicate identifier because of another file that's in the same path, but uh, we don't have to worry about that here. Ignore this error for now. The person contains a bunch of properties, right? First name and last name. Now let's say I wanna create a class, uh, let's say admin extends person, and then I have uh, some stuff related to admin, let's say class manager extends person and there's some stuff relating to manager and now let me create a couple of instances all right so i have what i'm doing here is i have a class called person and i have two classes which extends person and i have an instance for each of those two classes. Now let's say I wanna create a similar echo function but for a person instance, right? So let's say I have a function, uh, let's call it person echo, which takes in a person and then it returns a person. Now I wanna call uh, var foo equals person echo of, let's say, admin. Now foo is of type any because there is no type information here, but we learned that generics are helpful. I can make this of type t and then the return type is gonna be of type t and of course before I do that, I need to make t as a generic variable by doing this. And now foo is gonna be of type admin because I'm passing an admin over here, all right? This is good, but let's say I want this to be restricted to only classes that extend person, either person instances or classes that extend person. Now let's say I'm doing something like this. I'm making, maybe I'm calling person dot first name, for instance, I'm making assumptions that the person that is being passed is of an instance of this class. So how do I restrict it to either the person instances or classes that extend person? Now there's one thing I could do. I can just get rid of generics and then I can make this be of type person, right? So this is polymorphism. Now any instance of person can be passed in and then I can access this person dot full name, last name, they're all accessible now because TypeScript knows that any instance that's passed is of type person. But now notice what happens when I call person echo of admin and I hold on to that in a variable. Now this variable becomes of type person because this returns person. So I have lost some information over here. Now I no longer get the same type that was passed in. I pass in an admin, I'm gonna get person. I pass in an instance of manager, I'm still gonna get person. Now, that's not what I want. I want this to echo the type, but I also want it to have information that this extends person. So the way to do that is by creating a generic like before. So I'm gonna do this and put this back. So now we have the type information. I pass in admin. I'm gonna get admin, but how do I safely access person's member variables of the person class, assuming it's of the person class? The way to do this is by telling TypeScript that whatever T I'm using over here should be a class that extends person. And the way I do that is by using extends and then the class that I'm restricting it to. So basically what I'm doing is just the same as what I did over here, creating a placeholder for a type which is generic, but 
I'm providing additional information here. So not only am I creating a placeholder, I'm also telling TypeScript that this placeholder applies only to classes that extend person. All right, so now when I pass an admin, it checks to make sure that this extends person, yes, admin extends person, so that's good. And then the generic mechanism applies and then what do you get back is of type admin. So if you see here, this is of type admin. And let's say I do a var bar equals person echo of manager. If I pass in manager, I'm gonna get back a type, which is manager. So you can do a bunch of these things to configure what the generic type should be. You can enforce restrictions on it, it just doesn't have to be any. Here, we just created this placeholder and there were no restrictions. It was almost as if you had any, right? And just mirroring that in the response in the return type of the function. But here, not only do you have a placeholder, you also have a restriction. So generics allows you to do that. And it's pretty powerful in certain situations.